Hi, Adam from Interaxis here. Well, I want to talk to you a little bit about some types of DAOs. Of course, we've been talking about DAOs that we started, uh, one called LearnDAO, one called PlannerDAO, uh, and these are basically communities, and those are, are two different types of DAOs as well. So I want to talk about some that we've seen already, and again, this is, this is not meant to be like the definitive list or the list that says here they all are, because of course, this is evolving so quickly. We can hardly keep up with it, and the, the ingenuity and the creativity uh, of all these people that are joining and, and that are being a part of this is unbelievable. So we want to talk a little bit about the different types that, that at least we've seen of these DAOs. Now, one of the first ones, of course, there was the DAO, which, which you know, kind of started the whole thing uh, back in uh, I think 2016 on on Ethereum, that eventually was uh, hacked and kind of ended DAOs for a little while. But then you moved on to, you know, we'll call them the protocol DAOs, and these are really interesting because these are, you know, DeFi protocols or crypto protocols that that were created and launched but they are now governed by a DAO, governed by a decentralized organization. Uh, and, and they've basically taken their governance and said, look, we're gonna hand it over to the community, the community of developers, and more importantly, the community of token holders to say, we're gonna put forth these rules as far as how we should be governed, but we're going to allow others to go ahead and create proposals and go through a certain process. So the, the autonomous part of it is, we are going to put forth all these rules just like they were code and say, here's how you as humans interact with each other and you have to kind of follow these these rules. So for a protocol, for example, uh, in this case, I don't know, we'll, we'll say something like uh, synthetics. It might say, look, here's the, the forum if you want to talk about something, if you want to discuss some sort of proposal to uh, you know, potentially make changes to the protocol, changes to the code, add something, take something away, request funds, whatever it might be, there's a certain process you go through. And it might be, you, know, you, you go on the forum, you discuss, uh, and this forum might be in Discord, and then you propose something and then that proposal, you, you discuss it. Everyone goes and discusses and pros and cons and everything. And eventually, maybe it gets to a vote, in which case you use your tokens. You, you can, all the token holders, any token holders ideally can go vote based on their token. Of course, you just connect your wallet and you, you vote one way or the other. And then the proposal either passes in which case, hopefully, as you know, as part of the the proposal, the idea of like, okay, once it passed, then what do we do? Or it doesn't pass. But it all happens in a very public way, where anyone can go propose something, and then it's up to the community, the organization, to decide: Are we going to do this? We've seen this happen uh, in the likes of Ave, where where people can. Um, propose that a certain type of asset or a certain type of crypto asset get utilized as collateral and we've seen that already and, and others can vote and there can be pros and cons and such. We've seen it in some of these protocols uh, or some of these organizations where you can request funds if you have an idea for, for reasons why you might need funds. Either you have an idea for marketing or you have an idea to build an application that utilizes their protocol and you want some funds from that protocol because of course it's going to help them. You can go propose Pose that, and and the organization and all the token holders are going to get to vote as to whether or not that happens. Because essentially, what they're voting for, what they're voting on, is we have this treasury of funds, and we are going to determine how that treasury gets spent, and 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 also the direction of our code, the direction of the protocol. We've also seen investment DAOs. Right, and so good examples here are like Flamingo Dow, for instance. Right, and so this is basically, you know, this is a group of people saying, look, we want to pool our resources because a, a bunch of investors is better than one or, or, or two, and we want to put pool our resources into this wallet, and it's probably a, a multi-sig wallet where we can all control it, so we all, put our funds in here, so let's call it ETH into here, and in return, we get you know, potentially DAO tokens, tokens that represent our share in the DAO. And then what happens is we have certain rules, of, of course, as to how we vote on things and how we vote what we're going to invest in. Now, for the most part, they've been investing in NFTs. So we go spend 
ETH or DAI or USDC, and we get NFTs in return. So now what we have is a DAO owned or a DAO run wallet, a community wallet that is multi-sig. So we know every, what everyone's public addresses are. We know who, uh, who, who is signing transactions. And, and, and then we are going to hold these NFTs in the wallet. We're gonna hold whatever else in the treasury in the wallet. And we have certain ideas about how we're gonna sell them, when we're gonna sell, what we're going to hold. And the value of these tokens is represented by what's in the, the treasury. So if there's a million tokens and there's $10 million worth of stuff, then every token is worth $10. That's kind of how it works and we've, we've pulled it. So that's kind of an investment DAO. You can also, have, we also see investment DAOs that are like venture capitalists, right? So they might not be investing in, uh, in NFTs, they might be investing in other protocols or other, other DAOs, other treasuries, whatever it might be. In which case, this isn't an NFT, this might be another protocol token. Right, so we, we've seen groups get set up where, you know, a bunch of, you know, individual investors, individual, you know, angel type investors go, look, let's just pool our money into a wallet and then we'll go invest in either some of these protocols that we think are good or, you know, startup protocols or startup uh, projects that are going to issue a token. We'll go ahead and invest our money and then we'll get a token in return. So we've seen those kinds of DAOs, investment DAOs, which are essentially like uh, investment clubs, but we form this, we put this wallet. We don't have to have a bank account necessarily because we're just gonna throw our cryptocurrency in here. And since it's a multi-sig wallet, we have certain rules as to who is allowed to sign, how many of us have to sign, and we know everyone's public address. Therefore, and we know everyone's public key. Therefore, we know who's trying to sign for transactions. So we can watch all, it all happens in its, its very uh, public. So then the, the other we've seen is there are kind of community DAOs, right? Community DAOs are, you know, they can start in, in various ways, right? It might start as just a, a club, a, a group of people that gets together and says, look, we're going to pool our, you know, a little bit of our money, but we're just going to create a little club where we can come chat, talk to each other, whatever it, it might be. Um, and we're going to issue some sort of uh, token, and maybe that token it, it, at the outset denotes membership. Um, it, maybe it, it denotes we're going to pool our money, we're going to throw parties, or we're going to have certain events, and we've pooled our money again in a wallet. But at the outset, this, the idea was this money isn't going to, going to go towards investment. This is going to go towards we just you know, want to have a good time. We want to be members of something. So you get kind of a membership token to prove you're a member, and we're gonna go decide on what we, we spend our money on, and this is a way we can pool our money and make sure that no one's gonna run off with it, right? Because we put it in a, in a multi-sig wallet, multi-signature wallet, and we put certain rules around it. Now, this can ultimately grow into something that is more valuable, right? Because based on who the community members are, you go, you know what, we, we got together, we had drinks, we had lunch, we had dinner, whatever, we started talking and we can really help someone else out because we have this community, that this wealth of knowledge and experience, so why don't we help someone else out? So others can now buy into our membership, others can now buy our tokens, and they will receive something. And again, we're trying to grow the value of this. So others can come in and I can put in my ETH and I can get some tokens out of this. And now I'm kind of a member and part of being a member is maybe I can get some advice. Maybe I can join the Discord or join the group and I get access to certain things that most people don't get access to. Maybe I get access to expertise that most people wouldn't get ex access to. And this can be you know, member tokens, this can be NFTs that represent my membership and maybe I get certain uh, benefits from that. Maybe I get NFT drops or, or something. Maybe I get access to certain uh, calls, certain voice calls or, or certain video calls or, or something that others do not have access to by virtue of being a member. But this community, this, this DAO, this organization basically of rules that govern a treasury 
and rules of here's what we're going to do, here's management, that's what we're seeing in community DAOs. So again, these aren't. this isn't the definitive list. There are several different types of DAOs that are popping up. And just like everything else in crypto, it started off with, with this narrow, kind of narrow definition of DAOs and what they were. And it has grown so much that you can't just have necessarily a DAO expert because there are so many different kinds because DAOs now are going to be the new the new company, the new organization, we've talked about this, this already. There, aren't, there isn't anyone, I don't think, that is going to be an expert in all these different types. In all, in, there's going to be experts in creating and helping to start and growing investment DAOs, and there's going to be experts in community DAOs, and there's going to be experts in protocol DAOs and, and tokenomics. Token economics is a big one that we haven't even talked about. Um, there's going to be people that are going to be able to help you with the different types of tools like Discord and Collabland. Uh, colony, the, the way you um, allocate tokens and such. So these are, you know, a few of the different types that we've seen, and there are going to be more and more and more because they're, the, the only limit is, uh, is, it sounds very cliche, but the only limit is our creativity. How creative can we be in terms of how we can organize a community of people going towards a certain purpose with some amount of funds that we can spend? How creative are we going to be in, in terms of moving that forward uh, and, and creating new types and new reasons for organizing this way? Uh, and it's really exciting to see, really exciting to be a part of, and uh, I hope that you know, anyone watching this can find some way to at least take a look, organize, whatever it might be. It's going to be really important. This is how organizations or companies of the future are going to be formed um, because it is just a more efficient, a better way for communities to organize. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope you'll subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video.